in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed It says, by you I will run through a troop, and by my God I will leap over a wall. I'm speaking to someone here who has not experienced speed yet in your life. In the name of Jesus, the remaining days that ends this year, may they be days of speed in your life. Please sit down. We are doing a refresher before I deal with what we are discussing tonight. I'm showing you the systems of advantage that when you say you are walking in dominion, we have a right to probe you until you defend your knowledge with these forces. If you tell me I am walking in dominion, I will say prove it. Defend what you are saying. It is by engaging these forces that we walk in dominion. Another is restoration. Restoration is a biblical system of advantage that helps men to recover lost time, helps men to recover things. Restoration is a possibility in the kingdom. And I will restore unto you the years that the canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worm, God restores. The Bible says, and God restored the years of Job. In Job chapter 42 and verse 10, the Bible says that God restored Job when he prayed for his friends. Job 42 and verse 10. God himself restored, he turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. And also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had. So God is a restorer. Another system of advantage, skill and diligence. Skill and diligence according to scripture is a system of advantage. The Bible says, seest thou a man diligent in his business, he leaves him with an assurance that he will stand before kings and he will not stand before mean men. Is that true? So you can be, you can be skilled or you can be born again, but if you do not take the time to build capacity to become skillful, in Daniel chapter 1, when you read Daniel chapter 1, in Babylon, the king was given the requirements to gather certain boys, certain of the Hebrew boys that will be trained out of the slaves, the people that came where Daniel was part of. You read there and you see strict requirements. The king did not just say bring anybody. After all, they are a covenant people. No, there were strict intellectual requirements. There are many believers who do not place value on skill. They say things like there is favor. Even the favor you talk about, I have taught you here that favor is not unmerited. Favor is merited. Proverbs 13, 15. The Bible says good understanding procured favor. It says but the way of the transgressor is hard. Give us Daniel chapter 1, 4 and 5 maybe and then we'll, we'll just get there. Is someone learning already? It says bring children in whom there is no blemish but well favored. The king did not want nonsense in his palace. He knows that if you carry Jonah in your boat, your boat will sink. The king was honest to appreciate that. These guys are slaves but discern, look at them. Make sure they are skillful in all wisdom cunning in knowledge, understanding science, such as have the ability to stand in the king's palace so that we can teach them the tongues of the Chaldeans. Among them, verse 5, the Bible says that the king appointed a daily provision and then among those boys, Daniel was there and all his friends and then the story continues. God is not an author of being dull. If you are dull, it's an attack 
backed up by laziness you must you must not excuse being dull with spirituality there is an intellectual component to dominion nobody will follow a leader whose mind is not at work are we together your mind must be active even the gift of the spirit will be buried in the mind of someone that is not developed say amen, amen. so these are some of the forces of advantage the systems of advantage available to the believer listen you are only matured you are only walking in the experience of dominion to the degree to which you have laid hold of these forces when you come to a door that is locked with precision and exactitude you know what key to engage you don't stand and weary yourself through blindness as it were in the days of lot that's what happened when the angels struck the people with blindness. He said they wearied themselves in front of the door. They were in front of the door, but the know-how to be able to engage. There are many people claiming maturity. There are many people claim, I am matured. Why? I've been in church for 10 years. No. You defend your spiritual maturity using the indices of character and conformity to the image of Christ, using the indices of your spiritual understanding, using the indices of the outworkings of the power of God in your life, and finally using the highest that the Bible gives, love. So when a believer tells you he's matured, you don't need to argue. Check against these four indices. Number one, your degree of conformity to the image and the character of the Christ in experience. Number two, the level of illumination and spiritual understanding that you have. Number three, the degree of the outworking of the power and the grace of God in your life because grace is multiplied through knowledge. If your knowledge is growing and the outworking of that grace is not working, then something is wrong. Acts chapter 4 and verse 33, it says, And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection, and great grace was upon them all. Hallelujah. So, one of the systems of advantage available for the excelling of the believer to help you maximize destiny, reveal Jesus, and live a meaningful life is the prophetic. Please write it down. I begin my discussion now. The prophetic. Tonight we are discussing the prophetic. I have taught extensively from teaching after teaching through these various systems of advantage aforementioned and many more will come but tonight we are discussing the prophetic we want to see and know and understand the role that the prophetic has to play in destiny actualization many people have erroneously and ignorantly thrown away the prophetic and the vast value that it brings to the believer and they have done so to their detriment. I'm praying that as you listen tonight, God will give you heightened understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, please let me your attention now. The prophetic is founded upon certain foundations. There are certain foundational thoughts you must have about the prophetic. I want to give them to you very quickly. Let's look at four scriptures that help us to understand the foundation. What is the basis for the prophetic? Number one, Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 3. Let's walk together, media. Hebrews 11 and verse 3. The Bible says, through faith we understand. Are we following now? That the walls were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things that do appear. So the Bible tells us that the technology of manifestation is that the earth only manifests realities that are already there in the spirit. Hence the need for the prophetic. The prophetic is predicated upon this foundation. Are we together? That it only happens in the physical realm as it is in the realm of the spirit. Number two, James chapter two, please, and verse 26. James 2, 26. Paul was speaking about faith and works. And here's what he had to say. For the body without the spirit is dead. 
So faith without works. For as the body without the spirit is dead. That means there will always be a spirit component to every material thing for it to be alive. A body there does not just mean a human body. Any physical expression is a body. There must be a spirit component that backs it for it to be alive. Your business is a body. If there is no spirit backing it, it is dead. Number three. Amos chapter 3 and verse 7. Amos 3 and verse 7. It says, Surely the Lord God will do nothing but reveal it his secrets to his servants, the prophets. That means that it is, even though God is shrouded in mystery, every time God is going to do something on earth, it is not without a prophetic voice, knowing and walking in partnership. I've taught you this in the series let them have dominion is that true we don't give god permission it's a wrong use of the word we don't give god permission man does not have the power to give god permission rather what we do is partnership not permission but that god has so chosen by his predeterminate counsel he said the heaven even the heaven of heavens belong to the lord he says but the earth hath he given to the sons of men so anytime activities are supposed to happen on earth, God will always make sure that there is an ear and there is an eye that has access to it. When he was about to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, he had to come down to talk with Abraham. He said, shall I hide this from my friend Abraham, seeing that he was going to be a great nation. And Abraham negotiated the release of Lot, and all of them would have been released but for Lot's wife. And the Bible uses her life as a lesson to teach us not to draw back. It says to remember Lot's wife. It says, and if any man draws back, my soul will find no pleasure in such a one. Are we learning tonight? So God does not do anything except he reveals to the prophets. Now let's look at Hosea chapter 12. We'll read verse 10, then we'll jump to verse 13. Hosea 12, 10. I have spoken by the prophets so god speaks by the prophet and i have multiplied visions and used similitudes even by the ministry of the prophets now are you seeing this now god speaks through the prophets but he also speaks through the ministry of the prophet i will tell you the difference let's go to verse 13. it says and by a prophet the lord brought israel out of egypt and by a prophet was he preserved. So the prophetic is founded upon the fact that man, even though he lives in the earth, by our construct, we operate across two realms. One, the realm of the spirit and the other, a physical realm. The presence of that duality of realms necessitates the ministry of the prophetic. Hallelujah. Now write this please for your information, everyone, please write. There is, I wrote here, there is the prophetic as an office. Please write it down. There is the prophetic as an office, but there is the prophetic as an operation. There is the prophetic as an office, but there is the prophetic as an operation. So there is the prophetic office called by God to occupy one of the fivefold offices of the prophet. But there is the operation of the prophetic. And you do not have to be a prophet to operate the prophetic. You do not have to be a prophet to operate the prophetic. This is very important for us to learn. I said that there is the prophetic as an office and there is the prophetic as an operation and that you do not have to be a prophet to operate in the prophetic hallelujah are we following so far now write this down why is the prophetic so powerful i want to teach you now why is the prophetic so powerful what is it about the prophetic that makes it uniquely powerful are you ready 
I'll give you two scriptural reasons. And please pay attention. Don't assume you know what I'm saying. Listen, open up your heart right as you learn. Number one, why is the prophetic so powerful? Number one, because the prophetic I wrote here, I'll slow down to let you write and then I'll explain. Because the prophetic has a unique ability to exert dominion over time. This is the first reason why the prophetic is so powerful. Because the prophetic has a unique ability to exert dominion over time. Because the prophetic has a unique ability to exert dominion over time. What does that mean? That means the prophetic gives you the liberty to access information from all the three dimensions of time. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow. This is one of the reasons why the prophetic is powerful. I hope you know that time is tripartite. There is the past called yesterday. There is the present called today. And there is the future called tomorrow. Tomorrow is not the day after today. Tomorrow is any day after today. Are we together now? Any day that is beyond today is called tomorrow. You can call next week tomorrow. You can call 10 years tomorrow. Any day that is beyond today is called tomorrow. And any day that is behind today is called yesterday. So the prophetic has a unique ability to exert dominion over time. That means you can access through the prophetic information from the three dimensions of time. The prophetic can enable an individual to reach into yesterday. Can you imagine? Yesterday is gone. There is no ordinary way of going back into the yesterday. But the prophetic is given the liberty to be able to reach into yesterday. And let me tell you, the prophetic sometimes can go far into yesterday and bring relevant information the prophetic can function in today and from today the prophetic can enter tomorrow powerful do you know what that means that means if you understand this teaching tonight through the instrumentality of the prophetic among other systems of advantage fear will die permanently If I can draw forth something from my yesterday and use it to make decisions today and if I can have the opportunity to access a tomorrow that have not entered physically then why fear the boldness of kings in ancient times was not just because they were warriors it was not just because they had weapons of war or a large army in addition to all those provisions the kings in ancient times were very bold because they had a group of people who could have access to the realm of the spirit either by necromancy and divination are we together or through the agency of the holy spirit for godly kings and after they prepared their army they would consult with this man what have you seen it is still a practice in many religious settings in africa and in fact, there are settings within Africa that the kings do nothing except and unless they consult with mediums and the people who interface with the realm of the spirit. When the kings make decisions, they make it from a standpoint of confidence. Most of us have taken too many risks in our lives because we are not interested in taking advantage of the provisions that the prophetic brings. God is helping someone tonight. In the name of Jesus. So why is the prophetic so powerful? Because it can grant you access to exact dominion over time. It sustains a unique ability to empower the believer to reach into the three dimensions of time. The prophetic can help you to get into yesterday. And then it can, it can help to um, give you perspective. Still on point one. If you are able to reach into the happenings of yesterday prophetically, it is able to give you perspective, it is able to give you comfort, and then also to give you direction. If I can reach into yesterday, probably something happened yesterday that from a logical sense, it does not make sense to me. But the prophetic has the unique ability to reach into yesterday and interpret those events from the, the view, a scriptural standpoint. 
the book of Job was written prophetically. That's why we could understand it. If we read the book of Job just historically, it will leave us in confusion. Are we together now? Yes. The book of Job gives us an advantage of what was happening in the realm of the spirit versus its manifestation physically. That's why we are able to have perspective. The prophetic is powerful. You can reach into yesterday, today, and even tomorrow. It can give us perspective to interpret things correctly. It can give us comfort and it can give us direction. The second reason why the prophetic is so powerful is that the prophetic can create supernatural possibilities. The prophetic can create supernatural possibilities. This is the second reason why the prophetic is so powerful. It can create supernatural possibilities, comma, and schedule them in your present and your future. The creative dimension of the prophetic cannot do anything about the past, but it can do something with the two dimensions of time remaining, the present and the future. So I said that the prophetic, second reason, can create supernatural possibilities and schedule them in your present and in your future. Hallelujah. This is powerful. The prophetic can literally create supernatural possibilities and then give them timing in your present and in your future by this time tomorrow by this time tomorrow that is the creative dimension of the prophetic he would have said by this time and stop there but the prophetic does not only create it schedules their manifestation by this time tomorrow hallelujah what does it mean to create i need to put perspective on that is someone learning tonight what does it mean to create write this down please to create means to make manifest in the world of men i like to give simplified definitions so that we take away unnecessary complications to create means to make manifest in the world of men most people have their idea of creation as making something from nothing. I used to believe that a long time ago, but I found out that is not a very intelligent definition. No. Just because a substance is spiritual does not mean it is nothing. Are we together now? We know that in fact the weightiness of a substance is how spiritual it is. So you cannot call spiritual substance nothing. The average believer says to create means to make something from nothing. Well, I don't think so. I don't agree. Creativity has to do with making manifest in the world of men. The system that transports spiritual realities and makes it manifest in the world of men is called creation. That means to give spiritual realities material expression is what we call creation is someone learning already because the prophetic then has an assignment to take realities that are already there in the spirit but in need of manifestation in your life for instance your victory is already in the realm of the spirit but you don't need it in the realm of the spirit there you need it here and now so the prophetic is able to bring it and make it happen by this time tomorrow the victory that came upon Samaria was already there in the spirit. But the prophet scheduled a season. The prophetic does not happen within time. It is above time, but it manifests through time. According to the time of life. Hallelujah. So the second reason why the prophetic is so powerful, it is because... It can create supernatural possibilities. Please look at me. Do you know what that means? You are sitting here tonight in Koinonia and when you look left and right, every physical thing you see in your life 
may not be what you want i have good news for you what you are looking for already exists otherwise you will not even desire it the fact that your heart desires it is a sign that it already exists but it's in a dimension that does not profit you yet the assignment of the prophetic is to pull it down and to make it manifest let me speak to someone even while you are seated here in church in the name of jesus christ by the power of the prophetic we schedule realities to be made manifest in your life hallelujah in the ministry of jesus when the centurion came to him to challenge him and to talk with him the centurion said jesus said i'm coming to your house and he said no speak the word only for i am a man under authority and while that discussion was happening he did not know that the power that came from his faith had gotten to the house already and was already correcting things as soon as he was done his aides came and said listen i don't know what happened but while you were speaking that means while this is happening right now you are in koinonia sitting some of you are thinking i told you tomorrow is any time beyond now beyond today there are things God is already arranging, compelling your destiny helper. Since he has refused to bless you, God will use the disguise of Christmas and say, what have you done for this family? And the Lord remembered Sarah. And the Lord remembered Hannah. To remember does not mean he forgot. That means you have used scripture to call his attention to the need for manifesting a thing. Please be sensitive. There's something God is doing. I'm saying it again as you are seated here in church. In the name that is above all names, I prophesy to you. You are here in the house of God. You will only return to shed the tears of joy. Please sit down. For someone while you are here, at this point, even though it's Sunday, someone is discussing your job. At this point, someone is discussing how to help you. Listen, if you don't believe this, then it's because you don't know what the prophetic can do. I told you, that the prophetic number one let's recap don't be tired this is a school we're learning tonight that number one the prophetic is able to exert dominion over time so don't allow the devil use yesterday to frustrate you and say listen yesterday you already rubbish yesterday thank god you have the gift of today and tomorrow it is always said the only person who does not have the gift of tomorrow is satan his tomorrow is already doomed you see every other person can use the past someone said if Satan reminds you of yesterday remind him of tomorrow at least my grandfather was an idol worshiper but you right now you are doomed no possibility for repentance are we together and then the prophetic is able to create possibilities and to schedule them in your life. Let's look at a few examples very quickly. Is God helping someone? I may not read through the scriptures. I will just list them so you just write a few. An example of this dimension of the prophetic is seen in the creation of man. Genesis 1, 26 to 28. Most people do not know that the creation of man itself is a manifestation of prophecy. God said, let us make man. While he was speaking, there was nothing like that on the earth. But from himself, he brought out that spirit called Adam, male and female together. And then he not only did that, when you get to Genesis 2, he separated them. The man, the male came out and from his ribs, he made woman. And from those two, the whole earth now, eight billion and counting. Another example is second second kings chapter 5 the full text is from verse 1 to 14 but let's look at verse 1 verse 10 and verse 14 the healing of naaman is an example the healing of naaman 
The Bible says, Now Naaman, the captain of the host of Syria, was a great man with his master. He was honorable because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. The Bible says he was a mighty man of valor, but he was a leper. Go to verse 10. Elisha sent a messenger unto him, the leper now. Go and wash in Jordan seven times. Everybody say the prophetic. One more time, say the prophetic. Now the prophet is speaking to him. The prophet did not say, I have seen that you are healed. He said, go and wash. That means even if he passed by Jordan before coming and took his bath, it will not heal him because it was not the water, it was the word. Let's assume he quickly took his bath in Jordan before coming to meet the prophet. He will still not be healed. Go and wash in Jordan. How many times? Seven times. And thy flesh shall come again to thee and thou shalt be clean. After all the pride and arguments, verse 14, he finally washed seven times. And the Bible says he went down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan according to the sayings, not according to the power that is in the water, according to the sayings of the man of God. And his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child and he was clean. The prophetic is powerful. Example number three. John chapter two from verse seven to 11. The turning of water to wine. There was no wine. Embarrassment was imminent in the feast. And Jesus said to them, fill the pots with water. And the Bible says they obeyed. They filled them up to the brim. Watch Jesus manifesting the prophetic now. He said, draw it out and bear it to the governor. And the Bible says they took that risk and they believed it. Verse 9. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, he knew not whence it came. And then verse 10. And he said to him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine. And when men have well drunk, then that which is worse. But you have kept the good wine until now. Verse 11. Turning water to wine, he says, This beginning of miracles, miracles through the prophetic, did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and the disciples believed on him. If water can turn to wine, then a tenant can become a landlord. If water can turn to wine, then a barren womb can carry triplets. This is spiritual logic. If water can turn to wine, then someone right now whose account is red, something is able to happen to you by the Spirit of God. It is true. Ah. If water can turn to wine, then that drug addict, that our precious brother, can be turned into an apostle of fire. Do you know what that means? Why we look not at the things that are seen? Anything that does not look like what God says, start waving it goodbye because it can turn to wine. Water can turn to wine. I'm not saying wave it goodbye physically. In your mind, this situation in this family, maybe you are a father, you can go home and say, listen, it looks like I'm an irresponsible man. I'm doing my best. My dear wife and children, listen, I learned in Koinonia that the God of miracles and the prophetic can turn water to wine. That means someday this cry is going to be laughter in this house. Water turns to wine joblessness turns to a job that somebody who today is looking for a job tomorrow will be the one employing labor that someone whose prayer life has died on ground zero is the one who will be inspiring people tomorrow the prophetic can I give you one more example John chapter 11 from verse 41 to 44. This one for me is about the zenith of the demonstration of the power of the prophetic to create. Remember our definition of creation to make manifest that which resides in the spirit without a material expression. 
they took away the stone Lazarus from the place where he was dead and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said father I thank thee that thou hearest me next verse the Bible says and I knew that thou hearest me always but because of the people which stand by I said that they may believe thou hast sent me 43 and when he has thus spoken Jesus the epitome of the prophetic he stood in front of a tomb with a body that is four days old decayed dead and he cried Lazarus come forth and verse 44 the Bible says he that was dead came forth bound hand and foot with grave clothes and his face was bound about him with a napkin and Jesus said unto them lose him and let him go hear me the prophetic does not only say come forth the prophetic also says lose him and let him go because if you come forth and you are still bound you, is, you, are, you just came out to embarrass yourself. The beauty of coming forth is that you are loosed. Don't say my family has been dead. Now I've, uh, God has brought us visibility. You must lose him and let him go. Creation by the prophetic. One word, Lazarus come forth. Lose him and let him go. And that was it. Now I have taught you here just for your information that in order of superiority the creative dimension of the prophetic is far superior to the revelatory dimension of the prophetic it's important that i reiterate this because we are discussing on the prophetic in order of priority the creative dimension of the prophetic is by far superior to the revelatory dimension even though both of them have the the active roles that they play in the life of the individual but that the creative dimension of the prophetic is by far superior and even more profitable to the believer than the revelatory dimension I wish there was time we would have gone to John 11 again and I would have shown you Jesus demonstrated two dimensions of the prophetic the revelatory and the creative and you will see that even in Jesus's ministry the revelatory dimension failed for instance when Lazarus was sick Jesus told them by revelation that this sickness is not unto death that means calm down I have seen it the sickness is not unto death he will not die but the Bible says he died so if you were to depend on revelation there that's it even where revelation fails there is still hope because creation can happen are you seeing that now it was Jesus himself who said our brother sleepeth and you see some of the disciples who were dull of hearing they said ah if, if, if he sleepeth that is very good good for him that's why it's good to hear with the ears of the spirit if he's sleeping he's sick so that is good for him and Jesus had to tell them plainly our brother is dead let's go and wake him up and then you hear what was it Thomas or one of the disciples very ignorant he says good let's go there and die with him I think that was Judas or one of these people and there are these kinds of people in church when the preacher is preaching they are hearing something else he said let's go and die with, how do you say such kind of a thing he said let's go and resurrect this I believe he was being sarcastic okay Jesus let's go there so we will even go and die with Lazarus hallelujah and where the revelatory dimension failed when Jesus got there he didn't say I've already seen Lazarus coming out Lazarus is dead revelation was correct creation Lazarus come out that means where revelation sees creative dimension can correct revelation can see that there was an accident tomorrow and creative dimension can come up and say in spite of the accident i decree and declare you will return home safe yeah. mm. how to engage the prophetic for victory pay attention now how to engage the prophetic for victory how to engage the prophetic for victory please help me i just saw light coming on two ladies right now as i just spoke 
this i just said this prophetic and i just saw light and the lord is saying by that light that this sermon is bringing redemption to many families where there has been i you know i spoke about death death does not just have to be physical it can be spiritual it can be financial i'm declaring right now by the spirit everything that represents death in your life by the power that raised christ from the dead i command resurrection now please be seated how to engage the prophetic for victory please listen the days that we live in right now are days that require high level spiritual intelligence you must know how to engage all these spiritual resources that have been given for the victory of the believer you will be surprised how many people's lives have been grounded scattered limited because they have ignored the operation and even the ministry of the prophetic now there are two principal channels for accessing the prophetic let me put this down then i begin to teach you how to engage the prophetic pro proper there are two principal channels for accessing the prophetic that means if it is the prophetic you want there are only two places you can find it not three not four not five there are only two principal channels for accessing the prophetic are you ready now number one scripture the first platform for accessing the prophetic is the word of god scripture second peter 1 and verse 19 the bible calls the word of god a more sure word of prophecy a more sure word of prophecy that means in ranking the word of god is far superior to the next platform that i'll be teaching you can you imagine that the word of god is a more sure word of prophecy and the bible says we have also we have also that means don't look at other channels and forget the one you have you have also a more sure word of prophecy please hear me believers i'm demystifying the operation of the prophetic for you so that you will understand every time you are in need of the prophetic there are only two channels that communicate the prophetic number one is the word of god scripture every believer can manifest the prophetic because of our access to scripture john 1 and verse 3 the bible says all things were made by him him being the word so the word is creative it can make all things just like the prophetic and without him the word was not anything made that was made you know what that means i may not be a prophet I may not operate in the gift of the prophet, but I can engage the operation of the prophetic by engaging in scripture. I'll be teaching you shortly, but that you can take advantage of the scripture and create possibilities in your life. Hebrews 11 and verse 3, the Bible says, through faith we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God. The walls were framed by the word of God. The first channel for accessing the prophetic is the scripture. Number two, the second biblical channel for accessing the prophetic, are you ready now? Is a human vessel in partnership with the Holy Spirit. A human vessel, classically speaking, is a human vessel in partnership with a spirit. But since we are not diviners and demons here, we are, we are emphasizing the Holy Spirit. Because the person who is prophesying inside a cave is also in partnership with a spirit. Except that that is not the spirit of God. Are we together? A human vessel in partnership with the Holy Spirit. So look up please. When you are looking for the prophetic on earth, there are only two places, only two channels that are authorized dispensers of the prophetic. Number one, the word of God. Number two, human vessels that are in partnership with the Holy Spirit. John chapter 16 and verse 12 to 14. 
What is the big deal about the Holy Spirit with men? Hear what Jesus had to say about him. I have yet many things to say unto you, he says, but ye cannot bear them now. Jesus is speaking, John 16, 13 now. He says, how be it when he, the Holy Spirit is not wind. The Holy Spirit is not a ghost. Unfortunately, they use the word ghost. The ghost, a ghost is the spirit of the dead. The Holy Spirit has never and will never die. He's the spirit of life. So I know that there's an error in translation. You will see Holy Ghost, but I can assure you he's, more than, he's not a ghost. Not even more than a ghost. He's not a ghost. The living spirit of God. Even when Jesus died, he was the one who came and resurrected him by the glory of the Father. Please keep that scripture there. The Holy Ghost. Powerful. When he, the spirit of truth, is come, the Bible says he will guide you into how many truth? How many truth? All truth. It said, for he shall not speak of himself. So the Holy Ghost speaks. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. Let's read the last line together. Ready? One to read. And he will show you things to come. So don't begin to question and say, how did you know? He will show you things to come. Any spirit really can show you things to come. But the Holy Spirit shows you things to come in a way that glorifies Jesus. You see, the glorification of Jesus is what distinguishes the ministry of the Holy Spirit against any other spirit. Because the spirit of prophecy always testifies of Jesus. Is someone learning? Let's finish up. 13, 14 now, that verse, it says, give us verse 14. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and he shall show it unto you. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, from verse 10 to 12. Two principal channels for accessing the prophetic. One is scripture, the other is a human vessel in partnership with the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, but God had revealed them to us by his spirit. Please say by his spirit. So God reveals to men by his spirit. For the spirit has an advantage of searching all things, even the deep things of God. Reading to 12, 11 now. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of that man that is in him. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man. That means you cannot know the things of God. What God is doing cannot be made available to you except by the spirit of God. Verse 12, the Bible says, now we have received not the spirit of the world. Are you saying that the Holy Spirit is not the only spirit who is out there? There is the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we may know the things that are freely given to us of God. Please watch this. Every time you want to access the prophetic, whether one who is called into the prophetic office or any believer that just wants to manifest the prophetic, please hear me. If you ever believe that a prophet is the one who prophesies, you failed. If you ever believe a spiritual believer is the one who prophesies, you failed. You only prophesy to the degree to which you are in partnership with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit factor must be res respected. Are we together now? That means glorifying men because of their prowess in revealing or creating realities and ignoring the spirit that powers them is idolatry. Because they derive the ability to see, the ability to hear, and the ability to speak, and it happens because of their partnership. Please do not forget this. This is now a correction to some of the mistakes that happen. If I begin to prophesy right now, whether the revelatory dimension or the creative dimension, because you cannot see the Holy Spirit, I am the man you see. Chances are excellent that if you are not given this superior orientation, you will ignore him. How many people will leave the Holy Spirit in their room and run to look for a man that he is the one helping? While we honor men, you know that we are advocates of honor. While we respect the prophetic office and all operations of the prophetic, I must let you know 
that any man who operates either as a prophet or as a believer operating the prophetic he's only doing that by the agency and the advantage and the mercy of the spirit our attention must be on God even by his spirit more than the human vessel and if the human vessel has been well cultured mentored and trained by God he will very quickly shift the attention of the people from him to the giver of all good things are we together but for your knowledge tonight just know that every time you are in need of the prophetic there are two reference points number one the Holy Scripture a, a more sure word of prophecy number two a human vessel empowered by the Spirit of God and glory be to God when you have within your reach both you see please help them now this place is going to get very hot right now so pay attention because I believe that there will be impartations as I begin to teach. I just sense that. Now watch this. Do you know, please let me have your attention. Do you know why the word of God is called a more sure word of prophecy? Very simple reason. The word of God has been tried. But human vessels you see, operating the prophetic through a human vessel, eh? it depends on many factors for its accuracy. Number one. It depends on the level of consecration and yieldedness of the vessel. Are you seeing that now? Let me show you why the prophetic through human vessels comes with various shades of inaccuracies. Even though it is a biblical platform. But it depends, number one, on the level of consecration of the human vessel. It means an individual can carry a spirit of divination. For instance, Leviticus 19.31. Please give it to us. Let me show you something now. Le Leviticus 19.31. I, I believe that should be it. Media, can we work together? It says, Regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them, for I am the Lord your God. That means a, a human vessel can have residing within him a spirit that is not of the Christ in fact the same Leviticus give us 20 and verse 6 I believe 20 verse 6 yes as the soul that turneth after such that have familiar spirit and after wizards and go a warring after them it says I will set my face against that soul and I will cut him off from among his people in Acts chapter 16, when you read from verse 16 to 18, the Bible talks about a young lady that was possessed with this, a spirit of divination. You know what it means to divine? To divine means to take advantage of the laws of the spirit outside of the supervision of the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says she brought much gain. Are you seeing that when it is a spirit that is not of the Christ, the goal is not the revelation of Jesus. The goal is the belly. We need to be careful. Are we hearing tonight? Very important. It is not just the accuracy of the prophecy. These guys found out that this lady had the spirit of divination. And the Bible says she brought her master's gain by soothsaying, not prophesying. Soothsaying. The spirits will speak and while she says that because I taught you here koinonia that the prophetic is a highly is is a manifestation of the spirit that relates with your emotions and your psychology very strongly telling you details about your life it can sweep you off your feet immediately whether the revelatory dimension or the creative dimension you know before God helped me to be known across the body of Christ, I remember when I would travel for meetings and people would be looking, some of them did not know me, and I would just sit down and say, ah, there's someone, the power of God is coming on a few people, and you could see people looking at me, what kind of pride is this, this guy? And then suddenly, people begin to shout up and down, and you know that sense of respect, and someone just keeps going, wow, this is serious. How did he know that this will happen? How did he know that somebody will start running? How did he know that this one will happen? 
The spirit of divination can do that. When the Holy Spirit comes, he has a singular assignment of revealing Jesus, not even revealing just the man. This is where, respectfully speaking, I speak to the body of Christ. There are many sincere people who love the Lord, but we need to trust God to correct our approach to the prophetic. There is prosperity with the prophetic, but the prophetic is not for prosperity. Listen to me. There is prosperity with the prophetic, but the assignment of the prophetic is not prosperity. The assignment of the prophetic in the New Testament and for the believer today is to walk together with all other graces and manifestations to reveal Jesus. And that's it. Are we together? Hmm. So I said that prophecy through a human vessel is limited by many factors. Number one, the level of consecration and yieldedness. Number two, the kind of association that person is. You can be a genuine prophet or one who is inclined to the prophetic, but because of a wrong association, it can corrupt the purity and even the accuracy of your dispensing the prophetic. Just giving you many information. Number three, your level of transformation and enlightenment. Listen, a prophet can be genuine, loves God with all his heart, but because his mind is not transformed, there will be a, a high margin of error in his perception. In Mark, in Mark chapter 8, verse 22, let me show you something. Mark 8, 22, the Bible says Jesus came to Bethsaida and they brought to him a blind man and besought him to touch him. We're reading to 25, very quickly. The Bible says he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. Watch this. And the Bible says he spat on his eyes and put his hands on him and asked him if he was seen. Are you seeing now? Look at the man. The man looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. That is an aberration in, in, in perception. The same way it happened to this man, there are many genuine prophets who have not been transformed to purify their prophetic, um, uh, uh, what do you call it now? The dispensing of their prophetic. So even though they are genuine, when you come around them and they speak to you, it ends up confusing you because it is a genuine gift or a genuine grace, but without transformation. The prophetic through a human vessel depends largely on your level of orientation and perception. Let's finish that scripture, please. 25. The Bible says he put his hand again on his eyes and made him look up and he was restored. And he saw every man clearly. Yes, I'm seeing a vision about you, but it's not clear. And most people come up with that unrefined dimensions of visions. That is why you see that the margin of error, they can say something today, it is very accurate. And you meet them tomorrow and what they tell you becomes the biggest confusion in your life. But because of the accuracy of what happened yesterday, you will now follow in that confusion and they themselves are surprised. Because the prophetic does not happen automatically. For the human vessel, it depends on your level of transformation. Some of you right now, you are in pain from the prophetic that blessed you. And it is still cursing you right now. It has both blessed and cursed you. Do you know why? Because as sincere as we the vessels are, our level of scriptural transformation is what connects to provide purity to our speaking and our seeing and our hearing. Don't go around saying I am a prophet or I was laid, hands were laid by a prophet and ignore the word of God. Most prophets only pray they don't stay to understand doctrine. Prayer will deepen your reach in the realm of the spirit. But the word of God will guide your operation while you are there. So most people find out the moment they have a prophetic inclination, all they are concerned about is prayer. And you can see a man two weeks, dry fasting, praying. And he will come out and tell you, you see everything that I saw? I saw you in a pit. Okay, what is the scriptural explanation of that? It is the Bible that now gives that seeing a perspective that glorifies Jesus. Mm. The prophetic from a human vessel is also limited by your level of 
level of sincerity at heart the level of character and sincerity of the vessel jeremiah 14 14 i believe that scripture is just coming to my spirit now jeremiah 14 14 the bible says and the lord said unto me the prophets prophesy lies in my name i have not sent them neither have i commanded them neither speak unto them they prophesy unto you a false vision and divination and a thing not and deceit of the heart let me tell you the truth please look up I confess to you as a man of God and on behalf of several men of God I can tell you when God brings you to a position where people know you and accept you to be a credible voice and believe in you sometimes you are pressured by the level of faith and confidence that people place on you that you are tempted to just say anything to redeem your pedigree I told you genuine prophets can lie I can come to you sincerely and say, Apostle, I know that if I just see you, all my problems are ending. Three of my children stole. I want to just know who to really deal with. And I, this is a simple thing with you. God gave you the eyes that see. You see, after, after acknowledging the investment of the Spirit in your life like that, will you now tell the person, sorry, it looks like I'm limited. And the person says, so I traveled from America to come and meet you only to hear this explanation. I would have used my fair ticket to go to a restaurant and eat and even be happy and chances are excellent that you can sit down and start saying things that God did not say and because you have a track record of credibility listen a track record of credibility does not automatically mean you are credible now a track record of credibility is an advantage but make no mistake people change don't say you were accurate and fine yesterday. We need to see what God is doing with you now. There was a man in the Bible called Demas. There's no time to teach you. Demas did not start false. He started genuinely and sincerely. But because of the cares of this world and all of that, he just derailed. A track record of credibility is wonderful. But that does not automatically translate into excellence and acceptance today. It is important for people to see your dealings with God now. Is someone learning? This is very, very important. So the prophetic can be affected. Someone can come with 200 million naira and say, God spoke to me and said, I should come to a ministry in Abuja. I want to verify from you whether you are the one. Or is somebody else say character please shout it say character now remember that man is willing to give 200 million is in front of you and the person wants to know who God said he should give and you are standing there are you saying that the prophetic can be affected by that scripture does not care who it is talking to it just knows that it is there to reveal Jesus you walk against it, you suffer. You walk in partnership with it, God is glorified in your life. But here is a human vessel who has eyes, ears, and emotions. They can look at you and just begin to think. And the flesh, the unrenewed part of you will now arise. And say, think of what this 200 million can do. Remember, God told you that your children are going to Canada. Could this be that this is a miracle? Are we together? The prophetic can also be affected by your capacity to interpret the things that you see and hear. The prophetic Matthew 17, please, can be affected by your capacity to see the strength of your ability to interpret the Bible says six days after six days Jesus take Peter and James and John the brother watch this now and the Bible says he brought them into a high mountain apart reading to four verse two and he was transfigured before them watch this now I hope you know they were witnesses of the transfiguration that transfiguration was a spiritual thing they were seen into the spirit and the bible says his face did shine as the sun and his raiment was white as light verse 3 and 
behold there appeared unto them not unto him that means they saw it too they saw moses and they saw elijah talking with him was their scene correct yes they saw accurately but let's see their interpretation verse 4 and peter said unto jesus lord it is good for us that we are here if thou will let us make three tabernacles one for you one for moses one for elijah this is a very potent spiritual experience and his perception was correct but interpreting it now imagine if you had to depend on peter as your man of god do you know how many things he will see correctly but the meaning he will give to you will destroy it this is one of the challenges with the prophetic the things we see and the things we hear are very accurate but because we have not built discernment through the word to die to decipher and interpret the things that we see correctly there are many homes who have been broken today because of correct visions and poor interpretation you can look up for i, I always give this example you can look at a couple and the, god will open your eyes and see a spirit maybe see something that looks like a shrine around her or see a horn or even a demon spirit now you saw correctly it is based on the degree and the depth of your understanding the word to interpret that in a way that edifies if you do not know how to interpret the prophetic you will just look and say madam oga you married a witch i know what i'm seeing and like i've taught you who will sit down to eat dinner with a witch? Let's be honest. There are many people today whose lives have been destroyed because of the imbalance and the inaccurate communication of the prophetic. Sincere people have been called demons. Are we together now? Because of the prophetic. Listen very carefully. There are many people who were doing businesses that were correct. But the prophetic just came and said look at this look at this look at that and there are people who did were not supposed to stop their jobs but maybe you see somebody working in an oil and gas company and god opens your eyes and you just see an estate it may tell you that in the future he will be doing real estate or in addition he should do real estate or god is going to beautify his life the way you are in the similitude of the house that you saw now it's up to you to use scripture and interpret you can just say oga you better leave this job now god is not in it and the man will leave a job paying one million per month and waiting to do real estate the first real estate he did was with a 419 person and one billion just went down and he comes to you and say prophet and you say i know what i saw you didn't lie but your interpretation was false please hear me if you are called into the prophetic here or through the health of your prayer life god has been tilting you towards the prophetic please stay with the word of god and learn wisdom so that you do not mislead people if i were called as a man of god to interpret pharaoh's dream egypt would die of hunger based on what i will say are we together because the first thing i'm going to go to most likely is witchcraft by the time you see seven lean cows eat seven fat ones and don't increase what else is that not witchcraft i'll just say pharaoh i don't know where you are coming from but let me tell you don't take for granted that you are the pharaoh something is wrong with you your life is about to be cut short but here is a man who had correct perception and correct interpretation he said both the cows the fat cows the lean cows the fat ears the unproductive they all mean time how does that relate to time that's what the spirit of god can do listen i'm teaching tonight i'm hoping god is correcting someone because there are many visions right now on your table full of false interpretations you have added to them there are many people who should not start ministry but just because you saw a man holding a mic holding a mic does not mean he's called into ministry it can mean many things listen carefully you saw yourself naked in the spirit it does not always mean witchcraft who told you nakedness always means witchcraft nakedness can mean intimacy i saw a chain you must be a witch who told you 
the chain of gold can be was it not a chain that was put on Joseph when he was honored don't just interpret things wrongly because of what you saw five people can see chains and it means five different things hallelujah a man can see his wife after four children you have vowed that you won't give birth again and then suddenly you will see your wife in a vision while you are praying pregnant with twins it does not mean to have more children you have to pray for the interpretation you see that now please shout amen. amen because i need to say this because many believers in the body of christ claiming maturity without stability of scripture you will confuse yourself and then even others i'm not you know that when i teach like this i'm not being sarcastic god is helping us to gain understanding i'm going to show you now the rules of engagement and then we'll wrap up with it but it is important do not assume that what you saw is what it is allow the intelligence of the scripture and the wisdom of the holy spirit to be the compass that helps your interpretation hallelujah there are people who do everything they see in the spirit you saw yourself smacking your wife that could mean that god is telling you that you are not mentoring her that she's a child in the spirit and the bible says foolishness is bound in the heart of a child but the rod of correction will drive it far from him he only means introduce mentorship not just love but you can go physically and say madam if you are Goliath, I am David, I will kill you in this house. Oh. Who is like him? Lion and the lamb seated on the throne. Listen, if you were John who was caught up in the Isle of Patmos or Ezekiel, and you suddenly have a vision and you see a lion you see an eagle you see a man and then you see what again a calf the first thing you will do is bind that vision and say this thing cannot be in the throne room this is demons this is this, this is witchcraft what is the face of an eagle doing before god what is the face of a man i'm seeing four faces this must be a cause this is this is ancestry and you will be binding it and casting it whereas they represent four dimensions that show the holistic spiritual growth of a man the lion stands for kingship dominion the calf stands for servanthood the man stands for your humanity and the eagle stands for your divinity god may be showing you something else and you are casting it through ignorance you may sincerely go to bed and God shows you a gentleman or shows you a woman. That does not mean marriage. Who told you that just because you, you, you can even see the person in a wedding gown in a vision. It does not mean marriage. It can mean honor. It can mean restoration. It can mean intimacy. Listen, I'm preaching from my heart because if the body of Christ does not understand the power of interpretation, many correct things we see and hear will mislead us. Are we together by reason of what I do I get text messages from people and you know sometimes people will send me text messages and say apostle my mother is a witch I want you to agree with me that anybody and any how do you just assume mama is a witch and you are 30 years old she did not kill you simply because you had a dream and you saw her frowning what does that mean does frowning mean she does not want my progress? What does, where did you get that from? How many innocent people today are going through pains? There are spouses that never talk because someone saw something. There are businessmen that just cut business ties and they say, what happened? You say, I went to bed and I got up and I just saw blood dripping. My brother, what does that mean? Blood dripping does not necessarily mean witchcraft. That may mean that this phase of business will demand sacrifice. So go through it with honor. Stop thinking profit and just press. You can't just assume that because you saw blood dripping, it is witchcraft. Please lay your hands on your head and say, Lord, correct every wrong interpretation. Correct it. Correct it. Someone pray. 
those following online pray if there is any vision any dream any prophetic manifestation confusing my life confusing my destiny i cry unto the god of heaven give me accurate interpretation of the happenings around my life by this time tomorrow in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus rules of engagement pay attention now as we wrap up I want to show you rules of engagement means how to make the prophecy from scripture work for you and how to make the prophecy that comes through human vessels i hope you know just because i'm showing you flaws here and there with human vessels does not mean that the prophetic that comes through men is wrong god still uses men even now are we together rules of engagement apostle how do i make the prophetic from scripture let's start with scripture how do I make the prophetic from scripture work for me? I want to be able to take the truths of scripture and make it happen, create possibilities in my life. Let me give you a few rules of engagement. Let's start with the prophecy of scripture. Number one, you must access the prophetic blessing of scripture by locating scriptural promises that relate to your area of concern. It's a long sentence, I'll break it down for you. You must access the prophetic blessing of Scripture. You must access the prophetic blessing of Scripture by locating scriptural promises that relate to your area of concern. By locating scriptural promises. These are the rules of engagement. Now you want to make the Word of God as a prophetic platform to work for you. Rule number one is that you must find from scripture, you must pay the price to locate where God has said what concerning you. In Luke chapter 4 and verse 17, you must access the prophetic blessing of scripture by locating scriptural promises that relate to your area of concern. Luke 4 17, the Bible says, and there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah and the Bible says when he had opened the book please say open the book one more time say open the book prophesy to yourself say open the book when he had opened the book sometimes it is not in walking around that you find sometimes it is not traveling from place to place that you find finding comes when you open the book when he had opened the book he found the place where it was written the word of god will never profit you until you find where it is written have you found where it was written concerning your health it is written have you found where it is written concerning your safety can i tell you do not trust any confidence you have if you cannot support it with scripture what makes you believe that your children are going to be great i train them well you are joking Go back to scripture. The Bible says, Blessed is the man that feared the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commands. It said, His seed shall be mighty upon earth, and the generation of the upright shall be blessed. This is the basis of my confidence. If you believe that even if your child goes from pillar to post, find rest, this word you believe will draw him. One day that child will come for koinonia, and as soon as he's sitting, he comes late for miracle service, He is barely sitting when the power of God will carry him. And as he lands like Paul, you will hear a voice, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Listen, believers, we activate the prophetic dimension of scripture by first locating where it is written. Everything about your life has a parallel that is written. Somebody shout it is written. Yeah. One more time. Let the devil hear you say it is written. Yeah. So the next time you say, Apostle, I don't know what is happening around my life. It is difficult for the word of God to help you with that kind of confusion. What is the area? Jesus will meet people and say, what should I do for you? What do you want the word of God to do? 
apostle have been trusting God for the fruit of the womb and it looks like the doctor said this and that and that and that I know if I meet you before you meet me meet the word find three or four scripture because in the mouth of two or three a matter is established find two I'm showing you how to to be a profitable believer find two or three scriptures that talk about your fruitfulness are we together now yes so that is the first key man of God what makes you believe ministry will prosper people like me the first conference I held I saw several people you don't know the heart of man hallelujah <laughs> people like anything that starts for the first time it takes the word to keep it going so number one you access the prophetic blessing by locating scriptural promises i hope you are not confused i'm showing you how to engage the prophecy of scripture now we are going to come to human vessels number two declare them boldly that's the second rule of engagement how do i make the prophecy of scripture work for me number one find where it is written from scripture and number two declare it boldly psalm 107 verse 2 psalm 107 verse 2 let the redeemed of the lord say so simple let the redeemed of the lord say so can i tell you bold declarations of faith is part of the ways that we activate the prophetic dimension of scripture ah in the name of jesus there shall be no loss the Bible says the path of the just shines brighter and brighter and you now personalize it and put your name. In the name of Jesus, I declare I do not have a better yesterday. My future will always be better than yesterday. I declare by the power of the word, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Numbers 14, 28, very quickly. Numbers 14, 28. Numbers 14, 28. Declare them boldly. Say unto them, as truly as I live, saith the Lord, as ye have spoken in my ears, so will I do for you. As ye have spoken, not as you want to happen, as you have spoken. Since all you were saying is there is nothing about us, this family we will not rise. You do not know that you have been prophesying negative things. So will I do unto you. One last scripture for that point. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 23. The Bible says to hold fast 1023. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith. The profession without wavering for he is faithful that promised. What has he told you? He said hold it fast through your profession of faith. Told you primarily through scripture. Apostle, now that you have spoken, I don't even trust my vision. So keep the vision aside and focus on the scripture that has been proven. While you fine tune your vision, you can be sure that you will not go wrong with scripture. Is God helping someone? So number one, access the scriptural promises in the area of concern. Number two, declare them boldly. Number three, write please quickly. Obediently fulfill the conditions tied to their manifestation. Obediently fulfill the conditions that are tied to their manifestation. Obediently fulfill the conditions that are tied to the manifestation of that promise. Don't assume that because you spoke, it will happen. Every promise of scripture has a participatory condition to activate the prophetic power that resides within it. And let me tell you the truth. The prophetic power that is resident in scripture will only be manifest at the instance of your obedience. Obediently fulfill the conditions tied to their manifestations. Deuteronomy chapter 28, 1 and 2, popular scripture. It shall come to pass, 28, 1 and 2. That if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do, notice, to observe and to do 
all his commandments which I command you this day that the Lord your God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth verse 2 it says and these blessings shall come on thee at the instance of your obedience and overtake thee if thou will hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God Isaiah 1 19 and 20 please give it to us Isaiah 1 19 and 20 we are looking at the third rule of engagement that turns the prophecy of scripture to profit you if ye be willing and obedient willingness is not enough obedient ye shall eat the good of the land verse 20 it says but if ye refuse and rebel ye shall be devoured with the sword for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it so you want the prophecy of scripture to work for you number one locate locate from scripture listen every time koinonia learn this let this be a modus operandi for your managing challenges and turning negative things into victory the moment you are in any negative situation please minimize lamentation go straight to scripture what has the word of god said concerning this condition your life still remains at a risk until you find at least two or three scriptures as simple as this is there are people who have felt too proud to follow the simplicity of this protocol now to their detriment you ask me what is the basis for your confidence in this ministry I'm not just going to say because the leaders love me or because I love them as wonderful as these things are I will show you scriptures that represent the basis man of God what is the basis of your confidence for continuity in ministry what makes you believe that this Christmas koinonia what makes you think that you will come back next year here God forbid I will not die I agree what is your basis Ask the devil now, don't tell me ask the devil, what is the basis of your confidence? Bold face is only a recipe for disaster. Surround yourself with scripture. And then number two, declare it boldly. Any truth you find and you are ashamed to declare, you don't have to declare before people. You are declaring to the realm of the spirit because the Bible says, declare ye that thou mightest be justified. Wisdom demands that it's not everything you say in the presence of men because of the heart of men. But as far as the protocol of confession is concerned, you can lock your door and begin to speak. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, I may be a tenant right now in one room, but I prophesy by the power of the Holy Spirit that I will feed nations. In the lifetime of my loved ones, I will build for them. I will build churches for Jesus Christ. I may be a man of God right now who is suffering epileptic in my revelation but in the name of Jesus I am gaining stability spiritually. I will communicate doctrine with precision and power. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And then number three to obediently fulfill the conditions tied to their manifestation. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. This is where many believers are bought the journey to making the Bible release its prophetic potential over their lives. Most people have found what God has said about them, but to now engage, to now engage, as you will be learning, the prophet spoke over Samaria. He said, by this time tomorrow, this would happen. And he went. Do you know the morrow would have come and another morrow, another morrow, and nothing will happen? The Bible says there were four lepers. Is that true? And those lepers began to speak to themselves. Because you see, the signs follow. The signs don't go before. If you cannot take a bold step of faith, the signs cannot follow. And the lepers said, listen, we are lepers. Why sit we here till we die? Let us go and fall into the hands of our enemies. If they spare us, that is fine. If they don't spare us, we perish. Are we together now? Sounds like what Esther did. Declare fast. I will go even though not invited. If I perish, I perish. None of them perished. Hallelujah. 
and the Bible says as they got up and they began to move according to the prophetic word of the prophet the Bible says the Lord made their enemies to hear a sound of chariots and they say ah the king of Israel has gone to get into alliance with other kings and they are now coming to destroy us the Bible says they got up in the morning and they ran by the time the lepers got there all they saw was food and gold the Bible says they entered from house to house and they ate free of charge they ate to a point that they said listen we are not that evil no matter how we want to exhaust this we can't finish it this is a lesson every time God brings you into the wealthy place if you think about yourself alone you will die they said it there because you are alone there there is no that those vast resources will you carry so much gold alone and be moving on the street and someone sees you wouldn't he kill you there is safety in sharing it's not only blessing there is safety in sharing and they said no 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 let's go back to our people and bring them can you imagine blessings that can feed a nation will four people be able to only wicked people carry resources for a nation and consume it by themselves does that sound like what happens in Africa only very wicked people now that everybody prayed everybody suffered prophecy now came and then a few people just said, now that we have found it, let's just stay here and eat it. Hallelujah. Let me give you the last key. We're about to pray. What is the last key? Remain steadfast, giving thanks. Remain steadfast, comma, giving thanks. Remain steadfast, giving thanks. This is the fourth key. We're discussing rules of engagement now. How to release the prophetic potential that is locked up in the word of God. Number one, locate scriptures that address the issue of concern. Number two, that you declare boldly as a law. You are not declaring because you are a noisemaker. It is a law in the spirit. The law of manifestation demands that it is only what is spoken that manifests. Number three, that you obediently fulfill the conditions that are tied therein. For instance, if you are praying and trusting God for wealth and prosperity, and you are not a giver, you are not faithful in your tithing, you are not faithful in giving, are we together? You are not faithful in taking advantage of your mind to have it transformed. You are not faithful in being valuable to be able to, pro to, you know, to, 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 to be productive, to be fruitful. You are already, no matter what you confess, at best, you will just have trickles of favor dripping down like dew. But you want sustainable blessings, you must find out the conditions that connect to it. The Bible says, he that wants friends, the condition is that you must show yourself friendly. So if you are a selfish person who is all about you, you will find out that you will never have friends. You will go from pillar to post saying, this lady does not like me. This man does not like me. But the problem, sometimes he can even say, even my husband too does not like me. Before you now judge them, find out, are you friendly? As simple as that. Apostle, destiny helpers have not come to my life. Being, receiving from destiny helpers is a harvest. Who have you become a destiny helper to? Nobody. You can clap. Some of you want to clap. Please clap because that is a revelation for you. It is amazing how many people will not give many things they want given to them. Are we together now? Please listen. I'm trusting God for a destiny helper. I'm trusting God for someone to give me a job. I'm trusting God for someone to sow 1 million, 10 million. Believers even have the audacity. Faith is not foolishness. You ask them, what are you trusting God for? Say, I'm, at least I will manage 100 million. And you look at the person and say, what are you saying? And yet that person's mother or father is crying in the village. And the 2 million that you have, even 10,000, you cannot take from it. God is not a fool. You will reap what you sow, not what you want. Nobody reaps what they want. They reap what they sow. So make sure that what you want becomes what you are sowing. Hallelujah. Romans 4.20. Romans 4.20. 
Romans chapter 4, speaking of Abraham, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. The Bible says, but he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Please look at me. It is an act of faith to thank God, steadfastly waiting and celebrate the manifestation of the word of God in your life. There are many believers that carry an atmosphere of gloominess and sadness. And they say, what is wrong? You say, Apostle, me, I don't know. God promised me that my family will be smiling by December. Now, this is December, whatever. A few more days. Is it that God is not? I know this God self. If not because I, was, I came from a Christian family, I will write a book that God is not faithful. And that person is still expecting the word to work. No. No. You must learn to give God thanks even when you do not see things happen. I'm still trusting God to change my husband. I'm still trusting God to change my wife. I'm still trusting God to open up those doors financially. I've engaged everything and it has not yet happened. Can I tell you, I want you to recalibrate your understanding so that every time you see your life, make sure that all your eyes see is what God is doing, not what the devil is doing. You can see what God is doing and say, Lord, I thank you. You are faithful. You are faithful. You are mighty. Now, how do you access the prophetic from vessels? This will be our last part and then we'll pray. Have you been blessed so far? The rules of engagement. How do you access the prophetic from a man of God, a prophet? Now that I've taught you how to access the prophetic and to release the prophetic from scripture, I will round up this teaching by teaching you how to access the prophetic from vessels three requirements every time you are in need of provoking and accessing the prophetic from a man of God a vessel there are three requirements are you ready number one discernment discernment that is the first key you cannot receive from a man of God you cannot receive from an anointed vessel when you do not discern what they represent in John chapter 4 and verse 19 Jesus was with a woman who was a harlot at the well the Bible was the Bible talks about Jesus discussing with her and as Jesus began to speak the woman was just he was doing something to her perception and by the time we get to verse 19 the Bible says the woman said unto him sir I perceive that thou art a prophet. You started as a stranger, maybe somebody who will be my seventh husband. When I saw you, I thought you were like the five, the six there. And so I was preparing myself to hear what you have to say. But in the midst of the discussion, I've seen that this one, you came to rescue me, not to marry me. I perceive that you are a prophet. Are we together? In 2 Kings chapter 4, 8 and 9, 2 Kings chapter 4, 8 and 9, the Bible talks about the woman in Shunem, the Shunammite woman we call her, and it fell on a day that Elisha passed to Shunem, and there was a great woman, and the Bible says she constrained him to eat bread, and so it was that as oft as he passed by, he turned in tether to eat bread verse 9 and she and she said to her husband behold now i perceive that this is an holy man of god which passed by us continually discernment discernment do you know why you need to discern because men are men but you must be able to discern the grace that works in their lives above and beyond their humanity. You may be married to your wife and then God has granted her grace to be prophetic. That there is a grace from her. If you can look beyond her being just your wife, there is something God can use her to bring to your life. Familiarity has destroyed many people from receiving the prophetic from vessels. Number two honor honor this is a house of honor this is not new to you honor when you read the same second kings chapter 4 from verse 10 to 13 second kings 4 10 to 13 
having discerned that he's a holy man of God and a prophet of God, she did not stop there. She made a proposal to her husband. Let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall and let's set for him there a bed and a table and a stool and a candlestick and it shall be wherever he comes to us, he shall turn in hither. 11. It says, and it fell on a day that he came and he turned to the chamber and he lay there. They did this continually, verse 12. And he said to Gehazi, now this always happens. Every time honor, I have taught you that honor is the key to access. This woman did not even make any request. She just honored the man, having perceived that he was a man of God. And the prophet said, no, it's against the law of honor that this family keeps showing me honor without something coming from me to them. He called on Gehazi, his servant. He said, call the Shunammite woman. And when they had called her, she stood before him. 13. He said, she said unto him, he said unto him, say now unto her, behold, thou hast been careful for us with all this care. What is to be done for thee? would you want me to speak to the king or to the captain of the host and she said i dwell among my own people and if you read onwards you will see that gehazi now told elisha that i notice as wealthy as this family is there is a bot in this family they have not enjoyed the miracle of fruitfulness and he said that's right you will never see the woman asking for a child the woman did not ask for a child. She only honored a prophetic vessel and the prophet said, no, I must search what is not working in your life. And the prophet on his own, he said, by this time, accord, no, 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 according to the time of life, you shall embrace a son. And it happened as the prophet prophesied. There are many things, let me tell you, you will not need to ask men and women of God to pray for you for if you understand discernment and honor. Now, I know that, again, I always like to balance teachings like this because many times when we men of God find teachings like this, we press it into people. Don't come and meet a man of God empty-handed. It is scriptural, but it is not a burden. It should be by revelation and delight. Knowing that you see joy uh, and honor are principles that release the prophetic from the bowels of the spirit. But it is not by manipulation. I've been surprised at times where people want to see me and they're afraid and saying, okay, we, we couldn't see you because there's nothing in our hand. I said, what is, what's the meaning of that? No, honor is not just about giving things. It's holding somebody in high esteem as touching what God has done. It is good to honor people as much as God has blessed you, vessels of, of glory, but not to put yourself under, uh, um, uh, under duress. And I, I, no man of God who loves God and is a man of integrity and serious with this work will tell you if you don't have something, you cannot come to me. No, freely we have received. The Bible says freely to give. Are we together? So discernment and then honor. In 1 Samuel chapter 9 from verse 6 to 8. 1 Samuel chapter 9 from verse 6 to 8. This was Saul. They were going to look for their donkey, remember? And then the Bible says, Behold, the servant said, There is in this city a man of God. And the Bible calls him an honorable man. All that he saith co surely comes to pass. Now, let us go teeth up. Adventure, he can show us our way that we should go. Verse 7. And Saul said to his servant, But behold, if we go, what shall we bring to the man? For the bread is spent in our vessel, and there is not a present to bring to the man of God. What have we? That was the limitation. He said, listen, listen, if, if this man has that level of credibility, then it must have come through deep interaction with the spirit. And we should be able to carry something that represents an expression of honor. And then Saul said to his servant, but behold, if we go, go to verse 8, please. Verse 8, and the servant answered Saul again and said, Behold, I have here at hand a fourth part of a shekel of silver, and I will give to the man to tell us our way. And that, that became what they had and they left. And you know the rest. Through that honor as they got there, before he would even arrive, to tell, let me tell you this, look up please. No genuine man of God 
who has been helped by God and is determined to do ministry with integrity will sit down and pressure people over their resources. Do you know that while they got to the gate of Samaria, as soon as they saw Samuel, he did not look at their hand. He said, go up and I will tell you what is in your heart. It was not about the seed. It was about honor to give him access. Hallelujah. There are many, many people who are very greedy and very stingy. They can go to men of God. Men of God will pray for them, do everything, even feed them and give them money. And some of them are very wealthy people. You see, and they, they cannot, the, 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 the law of honor, they don't practice it. It's wrong. It's not about me. I'm not saying you should give me money. Believe me. But I'm telling you that it is a principle. Learn it as a spiritual principle. You want to provoke the grace upon an anointed vessel. Have the discernment to always honor. There are people who want to go and see politicians. You are not even sure of what they will tell you. Some of them will buy a car. Some of them will buy a house and say, I have five estates. Uh, honorable, I just thought that, uh, uh, let me just give you a recharge card. And the recharge card is one estate. And they come to a church and they see the church struggling. And yet the man is anointed. Nothing to be ashamed of. He's growing. And they know that with, with a simple check, and it will not mean anything to them. There are people who can build churches, 10 churches at a go and it will not scratch their, fi their finances and yet they will come and meet a man of God and say I hope you have time because I, my problem I need one hour and the man says okay I'm listening to you oh am I going to do this he says go am I going to and then they go and get blessed and they say thank you and they spend their money on psychophants and ignore those that were used by God to bless them there is a balance while on one hand the assignment of not of priesthood is not tax collection we are not there sent by God to be collecting money from people but I have to educate you as touching doctrine make it a principle and a point of duty that as much as God grants you grace do not go and see a man of God with a proven track record who you trust the investment of the spirit upon his life empty-handed it is spiritual carelessness I never, God is my witness, I have never and I will never go and meet any of the fathers of faith and just go and meet them and say, even if I stumble across them by mistake. No, I will not do that. It is not human worship. You don't know what leaves the spirit of people when they are happy. Go and ask Isaac, why will Isaac, I hope you know that the, the, the goat or the ram that they caught was Isaac's own from his farm that he ate so he already had it but he said go leave the one in my house go let it let it let it compel something from you make venison such as I love bring it to me I want to bless you let me tell you the truth as much as I don't I'm not really into you know money money all of these things it's not it's none of my business with i don't put people on, under pressure but i tell you the truth by god there are sacrifices and there are things that people have done for me i have found myself even to my surprise blessing them and prophesying to them from the depth of my heart and subconsciously paying attention to their needs as busy as i am you see i'm i'm, I'm being sincere and honest with you I love everybody, but you'll be making a mistake believing I give everybody equal attention. It's not even something that I planned. There are people because of the depth of their honor, their sacrifice from their heart. There are families that if they call on me, even if it is in tears, I will get up and make sure I respond to them because of the level of spiritual sacrifice. It is the same thing with us men of God. Everybody can call on God, but it looks like God is hearing others and not hearing others. The key is sacrifice. I will be lying to you if I don't teach you this. Native doctors will not even hear you. Go out. When you, your trouble really hits you, you will look for what to buy and bring for me. But in the church, we don't do that. But believers are becoming careless just because we are pointing imbalances here. I will not tell you what I'm not doing. In fact, as a principle, I will never stand up and go to any family, even if it's a family that looks up to me. It is a principle to always greet people at the gates with honor. 
Some of you, even your children, this law of honor has not worked in your life. You will go to a restaurant holding three children. They will stand outside while you are eating. You will finish and carry extra water and say, hey, let's go. This law of honor must, must work in you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I will be disappointed if you have been in Koinonia and you claim to be connected here. And you have, I'm not saying to me, I wish I were not the one preaching this. You see, it's very difficult to tell the truth of this sort. Especially if you are the one who is, is you know, you are saying it in your own platform. But I ought to tell you the truth. When your hands are close to honor, your destiny will be close to access. Honor. You want to receive from prophetic vessels? If you do not find them worthy of your attention, then leave them in peace. But for as long as you are determined to engage them, respect what they represent and honor your way into the deepest bowels of the prophetic. Number three, faith. Three rules of engagement from receiving from prophetic vessels. Number one, discernment. Number two, honor. Number three, faith. Faith means you have to believe that God is able to use them to speak to you. Second Chronicles 2020, we're wrapping up. 2020, Second Chronicles. They rose up early in the morning and they went into the wilderness of Tekoa. The Bible says, and as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, old Koinonia, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. He says, Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Then believe. He didn't just say, Listen. Believe his prophets, so shall you prosper. In John chapter 2 from verse 5, John chapter 2 from verse 5, the Bible says the wedding in Cana now, wine had finished and they all came to Jesus and the mother told them, he said, whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. Verse 6, now he begins to speak, reading to 8, and there were set six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews containing two or three frackings apiece. 7, Jesus said unto them, fill the water pots you want to see a miracle take a step of faith by believing in my word fill the water pots with water ladies and gentlemen that was a huge risk and they filled them up to the brim obedience faith verse 8 now he takes it deeper he says now draw out as at the time you are drawing out what you are seeing is water but bear it and take the risk at my word be on your way to go to the governor do you know they will kill those people if that water did not turn to wine? You know in those days they didn't forgive. Straight they would just hang them or kill them or do all kinds of things. I'm sure those guys were moving and saying, what is this now? We came for reception, a wedding that is not even our own. This guy is now leading us to go and die for nothing. Listen to me. Whether you are Naaman or you are the one in need of an embarrassment to be averted from your wedding, the moment you come to a prophetic vessel, be ready to hear instruction and be ready to act. There are times I have come here to give us prophetic instructions to fast, to sow, to listen. And there are many people who have embraced it as touching the voice of God. Some of you here with simplicity of heart and meekness have received this prophetic voice as touching the grace of God and you have seen what it has happened but there are people who are too intellectual or too scientific or too rich or too wise in their own understanding you see when you are flying a plane you have to depend on the intelligence of the captain and the crew you are not at liberty as 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 gigantic as that plane or that ship is there is only one man that controls that flight and sometimes he can tell you we're about to approach turbulence. So make sure you put on your seatbelt. Please minimize any other thing. If you are distributing food, stop for the moment. He knows what he's saying. It is for you to believe. Sometimes even a minute or two after he's spoken, you will not sense any bump. And then all of a sudden, it becomes bumpy. Because by reason of being pilot, he has the privilege of sight and the privilege of all kinds of things within the cockpit there and you know that can help to direct him 
you are following and so you listen Africa hear me as much as we are trusting God to correct some of the sad things that are happening with the prophetic let us be careful so that we do not make the mistake of the West let us be careful so that we do not make the mistake of the East westernization made many people in the West and in Europe to crucify their prophets they came up with a point where they felt John Knox what can you say E.M. Bounds what can you say Charles G. Finney what can you say we have a government we have economists we have intellectuals and right now some of those regions are nationally barren of prophetic voices there are regions in the earth where there are no prophetic and apostolic voices because the people made it they sowed the seed of killing and destroying the prophetic Africa I understand that many lives have been wrecked because of the mismanagement of the prophetic I understand I know that there are many people who have reason to communicate the prophetic barring of integrity God is helping all of us but I can tell you this is a clarion call to Africa we need to be careful Nigeria we need to be careful do not destroy your prophets it is a trap you owe it to pray for the prophets and pray for purity of grace purity of perception purity of character and truthfulness in serving God but can I tell you a nation a church a region that shuts down is prophetic has shut down a major advantage in their lives I am a product of the prophetic the fathers of faith have spoken over my life I have watched the prophetic through my life lift and raise many people and chiefest of all we are saved by the word we are transformed by the word the word of God said it that if we pay attention to this we will be transformed we believed in that prophetic truth look what our lives have become we're about to pray because by this time tomorrow for someone in the name of Jesus for someone it is a literal tomorrow for someone it's a prophetic tomorrow meaning the seasons that you have left forget about what has gone wrong please rise up on your feet we're about to pray just a few minutes let's minimize moving up and down we just have a few minutes and we're done two prayer points tonight prayer point number one from the depth of your heart I like you to pray and cry unto God and say father I open up my heart to the prophetic as a system of advantage for my lifting for my rising for my dominion and for my excelling open up your mouth and pray I open up my spirit I open up my spirit to the prophetic dimension I believe in the power of the prophetic first the prophecy of scripture being the most sure word of prophecy we live by the word it is by the word we are built it is by the word we are established someone pray I contend for that prophetic dimension that comes with the word is someone praying let it be from the depth of your heart please no looking around your eyes on Jesus and you pray I open up my spirit to the prophetic the prophetic the more sure word of prophecy and then anointed vessels as God has placed in my life with integrity and with honor to the word of God go ahead and pray Lord we open up our hearts to the prophetic the prophetic office and the operation of the prophetic hallelujah now before I speak over your life and I want you to be patient and receive it number two we are going to pray for the prophetic office ministry and the prophetic generally in Nigeria and Africa particularly we owe a responsibility to pray and say Lord we declare number one redemption number two restoration number three glorification of the prophetic that every area of lapse and corruption and flesh we declare that it be pruned out by the dealings of God are we together now that God will raise in every region genuine prophetic and apostolic voices in your family in your church in every region 
God that would dispense the prophetic with character, with dignity, with balance. All the games that surround the prophetic, let's drive it out of the body of Christ in prayer. All the imbalances and all the, the nonsense that, you know, the baggages that have come with flesh in administering the prophetic. Let's pray the mercy of God. Please open your mouth and pray. Pray for men and women of God in Nigeria. Pray for men and women of God in Africa. Pray for men and women of God in Europe. Pray for men and women of God in America, Australia, everywhere your mind can take you to pray. Lord, sustain the prophetic. Sustain the revelatory dimension of the prophetic. Sustain the creative dimension of the prophetic. Let destinies not be aborted because of dishonor to the prophetic. Let confusion not remain in your body because of dishonor to the prophetic. Let darkness not fall upon us without eyes that see and warn, without ears that hear and warn because of our pride in persecuting those you have gifted with grace. Pray. Lord, we pray for pruning. Let there be judgment and pruning among the prophetic and the apostolic in Nigeria, in Africa. Walk on the character of men and women, they that bear the vessels of the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, prune out every flesh, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, childishness, immaturity, the mix of the prophetic with various shades of divination and extra biblical practices take it out of your body oh god but by all means preserve the prophetic by all means oh god and for your name's sake preserve the prophetic hallelujah my final word to the body of Christ, please hear me. There is no man of God and no woman of God, especially one called into the prophetic and the apostolic, who should outgrow training. Let me repeat myself. Many of the nonsense that we experience in the body of Christ, sometimes it is not an issue of sin. It's just an issue of childishness. Are we together? If you were a man and a woman of God listening to me following by way of rebroadcast or you are here, let me challenge you. No matter what height you attain, please humble yourself to learn. Learn at the feet of those who know what they are doing. Let me tell you the, the major problem with Africa. In many African regions, the apostolic voices that speak as fathers are still young people. And we salute them for their diligence to rise. But you see, nations need fathers, and fathers indeed. A combination of experience and the length of years working with God. The Bible says, woe unto any nation whose king is a child. I'm not being sarcastic. We have, we've already acknowledged the great ministries in this nation and across. There are many ministries that are led by children. Not just children in age, but children in mind. And some of these excesses are purely products of immaturity. Gifted people, but no character and emotional stability and maturity. So we keep, we, we desecrate the altar and bring reproach to the body of Christ because of lack of maturity. We must trust God for grace, for stability. Are we together? Stability in character as we dispense the prophetic. You are prophesying to people. Go and find out the rules of prophesying to people. Don't just say, I saw. And you call someone and you are describing explicit things in the presence of people. You know what I'm talking about. You are describing things that, a ma this one is not the issue of sin. It's about training and maturity. There are rules to prophesying. You don't just say everything you are seeing. No, the spirit of a prophet is subject to the prophet. Anything you are going to say that does not translate to edification and comfort, you can hide it, see the people privately. And then this God of mammon, bring money and I prophesy. 
may God deliver us in the name of Jesus and then for us too as men of God open up themselves including me to speak to you as much as you love and respect us make sure that you trust God for grace as much as possible don't idolize the prophetic the prophetic is not Jesus the prophetic is a system of advantage that reveals Jesus when you place your faith entirely in the prophetic you are an idol worshiper even if it's genuine prophetic our faith should be on Jesus the Bible calls Jesus not the prophetic the author and the finisher of our faith are we together now let me speak over your life you don't have to kneel or stand just believe I've been commanded to bless and he has granted grace and I want you to believe believe we have been commanded to bless I've told you what it does we can take advantage of time and program spiritual possibilities I decree and declare in the name of Jesus for as many who will believe as many whose hearts will be open between now and December 31st may my God give you a reason to laugh may my God give you a reason to laugh may my God give you a reason to laugh number two every long-standing issue that has been around your life and your family and has refused to bow to the name of the Lord I'm declaring some of you in a matter of days that situation comes to an end number three please receive this one I want to speak over your finances I truly got up this morning and I was concerned and burdened in my heart there are many people right now who are dying of high blood pressure they love the Lord pastors individual but this money thing there are people who are already at the corridors of compromise because of tea and bread business did not seem to work this year there are couples that are about to tear apart right now and it's because of money let me speak over your life in the name that is above all names hear me anyone here who is in any financial condition that is for shame and for reproach in the name of Jesus come out of it now by the ministry of destiny help us come out of it now I speak to every family here that all you have seen in your family is crying and languishing in the name that is above all names I open you up to a season of laughter there are family members that have not seen eyeball to eyeball in the name of Jesus may the reconciler in this season bring reconciliation hear me I am led to specially I'm sensing in my spirit now to pray for couples that have been far apart either because of visa issues someone husband is in America wife is in Nigeria for four years they've not seen themselves they've not seen their children in the name of Jesus if there is anyone like that under the sound of my voice I declare supernaturally may the Lord bring connection anyone here carrying the cause of death you are already seeing dead people in your dreams you are already having all kinds of demonic destructive things listen listen hold on please my apologies for taking your time do you know in the last three weeks one of the case the case that I've seen that in my email and text messages is people having breathing problems somebody just gets up and we're not talking COVID though you can't breathe again let me pray for someone if there is any manifestation of the spirit of death translating to any cardiovascular disease to cut short your life I decree and declare be free from it now koinonia hear me your sleep is not for death you will not die in your sleep 
Your travel is not for death. You will not die on the road. Please help them. The prophetic. Every hand that has been brought down in shame and you are saying, Lord, will I remain like this? Prophetically, I hold your hand. I lift it up. May it remain lifted forever. Anyone here having a court case or any legal issue that is about to eat up your family, by all means, I prophesy favor and mercy for you. Yes. Hallelujah. Anyone here called barren that your womb has refused to take in, I don't care what the medical condition is. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I speak over you. Between now and the end of this year, may a miracle start in your life. Please be patient. I don't know who has forgotten you. And because they forgot you, all kinds of needless hardship. Some of you are surrounded by people that if they were led by God to remember you, the truth is that shame will be rolled away from your life. Any spirit that has made them forget you, in the name of Jesus right now, I open the book of remembrance. And for any one of you who has misused opportunities that were once opened because of carelessness and now that door is closed, I prophesy restoration for you. Please hear me. Any altar and any coven and any shrine carrying anybody's name or any family to say you will not rise, that in this December for you it will be tears while others are laughing. I call upon my God in the name of Jesus and by the power of prophecy. May that altar catch fire now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Two more speakings and we're done. Hear me. There is a spirit that always leads men to trouble. You get up in the morning in peace. You will just go somewhere you are not supposed to go. And you just see police come and they say, everybody here, just go to the police station. Why? When you get there, we'll tell you. Can I tell you the truth? It says, lead us not into temptation. Is that in your Bible? Lead us not into temptation. I know people who were minding their business. Someone came and said, let me introduce you to one business somewhere. They didn't know it was fraud. They sincerely just came because they wanted to make meaning. Right now, they are in trouble. Anything that is a temptation, anything that is the devil directing you to put you in trouble, right now, make a you turn spiritually. Make a you turn spiritually. Hear me? Every transaction, every connection, every fraternity with troublemakers that can implicate you legally, can implicate you spiritually, can bring reproach to your name and your family. May my God take you far from it. Yes. Hallelujah. The final prayer now that I pray for you. I'm praying... Whether you have children or not, anybody under your care is your child. Can I tell you, you will not use your money to manage evil. Yeah. There are people just when families are ready to rise, you will hear that their child is in police station. You will hear that someone is sick. You heard the story of, I think someone, the lady who was healed here. I know a bit about these kidney things. And let me tell you, when you have a loved one that has a kidney situation, be ready to put between 10 to at least 15 million to manage them. And that, not even with a guarantee, they will survive. I'm saying it again. Every trap of the enemy to bring joy and sadness to your family, to your life, to your children, let it be averted finally right now. For some of you, it is with your own eyes, your own ears, and your own mind, God will use to prophesy to you. 
it will not even be another prophet you will go to lie down and what you wanted to meet someone to show you my god will show you using your own faculties hear me some of you you will be praying and the spirit of prophecy will come on you and you will start prophesying when you are done praying you will see that that prophecy was for you let me add one more prayer there are some of you who truly need an encounter with human vessels you have encountered the prophecy of scripture but you have been afraid because there are all kinds of people playing gimmicks i want to pray a special prayer for you the prophetic voice that god needs to lead you to so that you will hear to give you accuracy and precision i call upon god between now and the end of december i connect you to that prophetic voice Shout a loud amen. I connect you to that prophetic voice. Listen. Ladies and gentlemen, I can tell you this for free. The day you actually encounter a man that God has helped with the prophetic, with character to help you and give you perspective, in five minutes, the confusion of 10, 20, 50 years, the blueprint of your destiny can be opened like you open a room that has been locked for a long time. I'm saying it one last time. You don't need to meet everybody. You have been meeting people not sent to you, even though they are accurate. He said there were many widows in Zarephath, but to none was Elijah sent. Just because a man can prophesy does not mean he's sent to you. In the name of Jesus, even if it's momentarily, I don't know what prophetic voice has been sent to bring perspective and direction and rest to your life. Find them now. Find them now. Find them now. Find them now. And if there is anyone who prophesied upon you, and that prophecy is not accurate yet you have been acting upon that inaccuracy and is torturing and destroying your life in the name of Jesus I release you from the effect of it now wave your hands to Jesus and thank him for tonight's service by this time tomorrow you return with a testimony like the prophet over Samaria and in the name of Jesus, before I make the altar call, Nigeria will prophesy to you by this time tomorrow. Tomorrow here may not just mean physical tomorrow, but we speak over the tomorrow of Nigeria. We prophesy in Nigeria where national shame and reproach is rolled away. Apostle, I need Jesus and I need him right now. I cannot say for sure that I'm walking with God. Please keep standing, we're wrapping up. Apostle, as I'm standing here hearing you, I can truly say that I need Jesus. Please lend me your attention. There are two groups of people right now I want to call. Those who are saying there is nothing to hide. I want to come and surrender genuinely to Jesus. There are others who are saying, I've given my heart to the Lord. But right now, I, things have gone, my life is scattered, I need direction. I'm going to count one to five. Without any shame and any sense of inferiority, I want you to come and stand right in front here. You know that you want to make it right with Jesus. God bless you as you come. One, Koinonia, let's honor them. Carry your bags, your Bibles, and whatever you came with, and please walk to the front. Two. The moment I count five, I'll begin to pray. Please, if you're coming, hasten your, your steps. Keep clapping, Koinonia. Let's encourage them. Three, your bags, your Bibles, everything you came with, come and make it right with Jesus, the captain of your salvation, the prophet of prophets. Four, apostle, I remember getting saved, but I'm not sure. You can be sure. Join them join them you can be sure you can make it right and those who are following online here's your chance to make jesus lord of your life all our overflows please move to your led screens outside move to your screens jesus is giving you a new beginning right now
What an honor to lead you to his majesty tonight. Five. Hallelujah. Thank you very much for making this bold decision. Please, you're joining them. Come very quickly. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. The Bible says, as many who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Please lift your right hand, may I request, as a sign of surrender to heaven. And say this after me loud and clear. Please, you're joining them. Join quickly. When you come after the prayer, someone would have to lead you to pray that prayer. Say, Lord Jesus. One more time. Say, Lord Jesus. Tonight, I have heard your word. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior, as my Lord, and as my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight until forever, I am a child of God, washed by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for these precious ones, the many who are following us online and all the overflows. In the name of Jesus, by the integrity of God's word, I declare your sins forgiven, and I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over your life. I release you from every guilt and shame, and I declare that from tonight, it is a new beginning for you. You go forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen and amen. Please let me request that you all move very briefly to my right, which will be your left. There are counselors ready to receive you. They'll have a word with you very briefly. It will be very brief, I promise you, and then you'll be back. Let's celebrate them as they go. Is this the best you can do, Koinonia? Celebrate them as they go. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. To Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.